Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas for Kit Guru, and today I'll be taking a look at the spiffy new Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition CPU Cooler. So let's kick off with the basics. The Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition may strike you as a little familiar if you have ever installed or handled the very popular Hyper 212 LED or Evo. It shares a very similar structural design and the same heatsink dimensions at 123 millimeters wide, 77 millimeters deep, and 158.8 millimeters tall. It features four direct contact heat pipes as well. However, if you had both coolers side by side, uh, you would notice that this is basically where the similarities end. The Hyper 212 Black Edition, as the name suggests, has been given a new aesthetic in the form of an all blacked out paint job. But at the £29.99 price point, it's worth noting that the 212 LED is available between £25 and £15. It will be interesting to see whether this new look justifies this higher at release price. It kind of goes without saying that the packaging follows the same aesthetic as Cooler Master's other current products. And in the box we find the cooler itself with the included 120mm fan attached and an accessories pack with mounting hardware for all current Intel and AMD mounts. A warranty and instruction manual and two really cool additions, uh, an extra set of mounts if you wanted a push-pull configuration for the fans and a 4-pin PWM splitter cable. Very nice to see. To be totally honest, in the hand it feels just like the 212 LED as they do share an almost identical design. Straight away though, you get a sense of Cooler Master's intentions to improve on the overall looks of the cooler. The fins and the heat pipes have been given a nickel plated coating, so although coated, it's unlikely that this would impact on heat dissipation. Alongside the cleaner black nickel coating, the top of the cooler also sports a really good looking top cover which is made from brushed aluminium, with a matching gunmetal black aesthetic. The tops of the heat pipes are all capped as well, and there is a really nice shiny Cooler Master logo. Overall very clean indeed. The included fan as well has changed. For the black edition you get a 4 pin PWM Silencio FP120. All blacked out with a nice big blade design which looks a bit like it's been included for higher static pressure rather than airflow. Taking a closer look at the specs of both fans this does seem to be the case as the Silencio FP120 has lower airflow at 42 CFM but higher pressure. You also get a higher RPM up to 2000. The mounting mechanism for the fans has also swapped to a wire clip rather than the plastic ones included with the Hyper 212 LED, which to me seems like a good move as there's much less chance of snapping the mounts. You can just bend them back if they become too warped. So from first impressions, you get a cleaner all black cooler, which personally I think looks better than the Hyper 212 LED, although you are losing out on the LEDs. It's worth noting that Cooler Master do offer an RGB variant of the 212 Black Edition for £42.99. The heating itself will be the same, but you do get a SF120R RGB fan alongside an RGB controller for a price bump of about £13. So you do get your money's worth if you're more RGB inclined. Installation is very beginner friendly. You start with the backplate and by installing the four small square ended screws and mounting them to the backplate with the four plastic clips. The backplate can then be positioned through your motherboard and held in place with the four tall hex nuts. You can screw these in finger tight, but Cooler Master also include a screwdriver adapter tool, which is cool to see. With the backplate firmly mounted, the fan can be removed from the cooler by simply loosening the wire clips. You then need to mount two brackets to the bottom of the heatsink. Two sets are included, one for Intel and one for AMD. You can apply your thermal paste as a small tube is included and set the cooler down atop your CPU. There are four sprung screws which then need to be screwed into the hex standoffs to firmly mount the cooler. With the cooler attached, simply replace the fan and connect the four pin PWM cable to your motherboard's CPU fan header. Overall pretty straightforward, although there are some minor adjustments that need to be made to the two separate mounting brackets, instructions are nice and easy to follow. And it's also really cool to see that the mounting hardware has also been given the same blacked out treatment to keep everything looking uniform. 
All in all, a little bit less than 10 minutes to get the 212 installed. And I will say this mounting process has a breath of fresh air compared to the Master Air MA410M cooler tested previously. The fans being held to the cooler with wire meant that the initial removal was toolless rather than removing eight screws, and the more direct top mounting bracket was much easier to align. The fans being attached by wire also means that there's no awkward screw drivering sideways with the cooler mounted. A big plus in my eyes. Another small note that impressed me when installing the 212 Black Edition was the attention to detail for those looking to make use of spare second fan mounting. Not only do you get the spare wires and a fan splitter, but also a small set of rubber adhesive pads. These had me a bit confused initially, but once I had noticed that they were pre-installed when removing the included fan, they made perfect sense. And it's really nice to see that Cooler Master almost intended that you add a second fan with all this spare kit. Clearances of the cooler when mounted shouldn't be a problem. For RAM you have about 35mm with the fan pushed a little to the top of the cooler, but due to the 212 being a little thinner, the fan didn't have any impact on the memory slots and didn't overhang at all. I was able to easily install higher profile RAM in the very first memory slot with no contact to the cooler. With the cooler mounted, we can move on to the testing. At KitGuru, we have recently updated our testing setup and now test temperatures on the more recent Z170 platform. For the CPU, we are testing with a Core i7-7700K installed in an Asus Z170 Pro gaming motherboard. For RAM, we have a single 8GB stick of Guile Evo X RGB for some added bling, running at 3200 MHz, and storage is handled by a 120GB SanDisk SSD+. Powering our bench is, of course, a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. Now, when testing, we take a number of readings with both the i7-7700K's turbo locked and overclocked to 4.5GHz. The temperatures taken are delta T values, meaning that we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details on our full testing methodology can be found on kitguru.net. So, on to the results. With our 7700K locked in at 4 GHz, results actually look pretty promising. The 212 Black Edition came in a whopping 3.5 degrees cooler than even the Dark Rock Pro 4, and easily outpaced both the MA410P and MA410M. This is really impressive to see considering its smaller size and low in price, when compared to, say, the Dark Rock Pro 4 and a lot of other 240mm AIO coolers previously tested. This wasn't really the case when overclocking, though. When our 7700K hit full load at 4.5GHz, the 212 did start to move up our list with higher temperatures at both idle and load, um, compared to most AIO coolers tested so far. But it's by no means the worst cooler listed, again still outperforming both previously tested Cooler Master air coolers. The noise level's also pretty good with the 212 sitting middle of the road, basically on par with the MA410P. This kind of makes sense when you consider both the 212 and the MA410P are a very similar size and also feature a single 120mm fan. Overall, the newer 212 Black Edition doesn't fall far from the original 212 tree, as it were. It still proves to be an admirable performer, even though not the best with the coolers we've tested so far. It still holds up incredibly well compared to a stock cooler, and in some instances, liquid coolers costing quite a bit more. Performance at the end of the day is not groundbreaking, but the updated 212 Black Edition basically follows the same philosophy as previous 212s from Cooler Master. It's not the beefiest air cooler available, but you can still expect good cooling performance even when overclocking, that has the potential to outperform some more expensive liquid coolers. Liquid cooling, of course, is still a good way to go if you're looking to very heavily overclock your CPU and have it less affected by sudden changes in ambient temperature, for instance. To me, the big change, which is a kind of giveaway from the cooler's name, is the clean aesthetic update. There isn't so much a dramatic change in performance as there is an all-black colour scheme, which I personally think looks really good. Looking across the plethora of 212 coolers available, from previous releases, it's nice to see this option, which does look a little bit more premium whilst not really pushing or breaking your budget. Along with the holdfast mounting and simple installation, it's still one of the best options available to a new system builder looking to overclock their unlocked CPUs or attain better temperatures over a supplied stock cooler. With more CPUs being released by both AMD and Intel, which require a little bit more work to establish whether they actually come with some form of cooler, Intel proving to be a little bit more lacking in this area, 
the 212 Black Edition is still a great go-to to ensure solid temperatures whilst not breaking the bank. But please, let us know what you think in the comments. Is the 212 Black Edition's new looks enough kind of to justify the bump in price over previously released 212 coolers? And as a new builder, is the Hyper 212 Black Edition on your to buy component list? If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, make sure to leave a like or dislike, and hit the bell icon below for updates on new KitGuru video releases. I've been Silas for KitGuru, and I'll see you in the next one.